This is Carl at National RV Detroit, and I'm going to walk you through your 2018 Solaire by Palomino, and it's model 163X. Okay, so I'm in the door on the door side of the trailer at the rear. You have crank down stabilizer jacks. You use a crank or a three quarter inch socket. Most people use a socket on a drill these days. And down here, just so you know, that is your LP hookup uh, for your grill. So you have a swing out grill here on the back. And there's your grill right there sitting in the trailer. Um, so you get a hose with it and uh, an LPO is in the you use the quick connect and then turn that valve on. You see the black valve there. That turns parallel with the uh, fitting to, to turn it on, okay? All right. You have uh, steps that fold in and out of the trailer. The only thing you really have to know about these is you can adjust the legs using this, pulling this pin and then sliding them up and down so you can adjust it to, to the terrain. Also, you want it adjusted so it's pretty close to level with the threshold. Okay, otherwise the door might bind up when you're closing it. All right, you got outside speakers. You got a, a power video or actually antenna and a, a mount to mount your uh, TV set out here if you want to do that. Water heater. Works on both gas and electric. The switch to operate the electric element that is behind this panel here or this cover I guess you would call it. Uh, you operate it by, by turning the switch to on. Right now I leave it off and you always make sure that there's water in the tank before you turn on the heat or the electric or the gas. So you make sure that there's water in there. The switch for the gas is inside. I'll show you that when we get in there. This is the drain plug, inch and a 16 socket, and that's your pressure release valve there. Okay. So, you got a power awning with LED strip. This is the range hood vent here. It's for the fa range hood fan. Okay, if you're going to use the fan, you got to pull this baffle here open. I don't know if you can see it very well because it's black and it's in the shadow here. But so you want it to flap freely if you're venting. Otherwise, you're just going to push it shut like that. Okay. Okay, so you have, there's your crank that I told you about to crank your stabilizers. This is just a hookup for a, a solar panel. If you wanted to purchase a solar battery charger panel, you can just plug it right into there. I have your bunks down right now. What I'll do when I get to the back is I'm going to show you how to put it up. Because that's that's more difficult. Putting them down is pretty, pretty self-evident. So I'm going to show you how the back goes up and how it folds in, in on the inside. So uh, I'll do that once we get inside the trailer. Power tongue jack. This does, you can pull this rubber plug out of the top and the same crank I just showed you for the stabilizers, you could use to crank the jack, the, the, uh, jack manually if you need to. Uh, deep cycle marine battery. Your power cord. Um, okay, let's see what he's got in here. These should actually be in the trailer. Excuse me for one second. I, know I can't get the picture, but these are actually for your mattresses here. This is your LP line here that I spoke to you of. Sorry, I'm not getting you in the camera here, but I'm having a hard time wrestling with it here. Okay, all right, so I'll put that. And this is your power cord here, of course. 30 amp power cord, 25 feet long. Okay, so now the two ways to get water to the trailer, the most common way is this one right here. It's a city water connection. You're just going to uh, hook your hose on there, turn on the, the uh, water, and you're ready to go. Now, if you go to a, a campground that doesn't have plumbing on the campsite, you can fill your fresh water tank here. And uh, you fill that up, and then there's a, an electric pump inside that'll pump the water for you. So it'll work just like you've got city water, even if you don't. So that's a good feature. That's just your outside shower. Uh, 
a vent for the furnace. This is the refrigerator service panel. You don't really have to go in there. But this condensation line should always be hanging out just like that. All right. To dump this trailer, I'll put the valves in the closed position here. So you take the cap off, put your dump hose on here, and put the other end in the dump station. Then you're going to dump the black tank first. The black tank is toilet water and waste. So it's by far the dirtiest water in the, in the system. And then second, you would dump the gray tank. Now the gray tank is uh, sink and shower water. So you dump that second just because it's cleaner water than the black water and it'll, it'll clean things out a bit, a bit. But leaving, you have another feature here called a black tank flush. So leaving your valve open on the black tank, you can put the hose at the dump station on here, turn it on, and uh, it'll actually clean out your black tank even better. Uh, so it's a good thing to have. Like it says here on this sticker, if you can see it, make sure that you have this valve open before you turn the water on. Okay. All righty. This is just cable and satellite through to the entertainment area of the trailer. Okay. Oop, I forgot the I forgot our LP hose, which I'm taking inside where it belongs for now. Okay. So let me back up here a bit. You can see at the in the center at the top of the trailer there's a black housing. That housing is for a backup camera. It's a Furion backup crammer. If you get one, it has to fit in that housing. We do sell them here, so you can always talk to our parts people if you're interested. But it will allow you to see behind you when you're backing up or driving down the road. While we're looking up here, you, you, as with every other trailer, you have to inspect the roof three times a year. So um, I figure you go up there in the spring, you'll go up there on the, in the fall, and then once in the middle of the summer, you walk around, check the sealant all over the trailer. Everything is sealed with a lap sealant called Dicor. Make sure there's no separation starting, no cracking starting. Some year, sometime, it'll have to be touched up. That's why you're inspecting it, just to make sure that it's in good shape so you're protecting your investment. And that is the swing out grill bracket I spoke to you about. The grill just hangs on there and it swings out. Okay, let's go in the trailer. Now to actually To actually show you how this works is kind of difficult because I've got one hand to use here and another thing with the camera, but I'll walk you through it. So, this is normally going to be laid out flat and the, the mattress will be in place, like so. Okay, like that, except it'll be centered properly. There we go. So, to, to fold this up, you're going to come up here and you're going to push forward on that and disengage it and then pull it out of there. Then you're going to lay it in the crease of the mattress. Now, this will come down, this crossbar, and that goes in the crease of the mattress also. So then you're going to go over. Now I'm very close here and you're out of focus, but I'm just doing the best I can with this here. And then you fold the... Um, crossbar and the rafter pole right into uh, the crease. Then, this is important, you flip this little piece forward. It'll be much easier when the plastic's not on here. But you flip that forward so it'll close all the way. Otherwise, it'll hit that wall there and you won't be able to get it closed. So there we've done it. It's that simple. So we're going to go outside. Here, let me back up here and show it to you. I'm sorry. I keep forgetting how close up we are with this thing. So that's what we look like right now. So, then we come out here, we pull the canvas up over the, the, the skirting on the canvas up over the uh, uh, door itself, and then I'm going to have to go out and move the camera a lot here, but I'm pushing this up. You can see I'm going up with it. I'm going to try and tuck the canvas in while I'm holding the camera. Matter of fact, I'm going to just set the camera on this tire here for a second. Let's do that. So I've tucked the canvas in on, on this side. Then I'm, 
let me just show you. See, so the canvas is all tucked in. You do the same thing on the other side, which I'm going to do right now. Okay, I'm back. So I've latched that side. Up, oh, see now let this camera's come out. This, this is a problem with um, that I didn't look down here to see. Um, but I'm gonna get somebody to help me here so I can hold the camera so you can see it. If I could find somebody. Of course, nobody around. So anyway, what I'm gonna do is go. I'm gonna undo this again. Okay. And I'll work my way over and I'm going to tuck it in again. I, I can't show you that because I need both hands here. But that's a good lesson in what happens if you don't, if you don't tuck it in. So that side is good now. And so is this side. So I'll close this one. Oh, let me get my other hand on it. Up like that. Can't quite reach it here. Hey, what's wrong with this one? Nothing at this point. I'm doing a video though. You guys don't mind? So if I was a little taller, that would have been easier, but I'm not. Okay? So let's go inside. Then, you don't really have to with this much as this, uh, this um, mattress as much because this wall holds it in, but you can tighten this up just to keep them from flopping out. That's more important with the front bunk, okay? All right, I hope that made sense to you. I had a hard time with it, but it... Two people, it's easy, and if you're focused and not doing a video with one person, you can do it no problem, too. Okay. Let's see here. Let me pull the grill away. Now, the grill you're going to have to store in your tow, tow vehicle because it's going to smell like a grill. So, it's important to uh, find a place for that. Okay, so the sink and the shower work like any other sink and shower. Uh, you have to remember you have a vent here with a fan. When you run the shower, you want to run the uh, fan to pull humidity out. This GFCI here, all the plugs in the trailer are wired through it, even the one on the outside. So keep that in mind. If it's, if a pop, if you're using a coffee pot outside that pops, you will reset it right there. Now the thing about the toilet, you have to remember, you flush it with this pedal here. Now we don't have any water hooked up, so there's no pressure, but. When I open the trap like I just did, that's the black tank directly below. All right. So uh, you can't operate this without water or chemical in it. So when you first get to the campground, you're going to plug it in to power. You're going to hook up your hose. Then you'll come in here and you'll take your chemical, whichever chemical you're using. You put a dose right in there. You'll step on the pedal. Water will come swirling out. And you're going to put about a gallon or so into the black tank, two gallons one gallon somewhere in there. The reason you do that because you can't use a dry or without chemical. Okay, so you have to remember that anytime you're starting off with an empty black tank, you have to put chemical and uh, water in there. Now, just so you know, when you flush it, it'll only fill about up to there. That's just so it doesn't slosh out when you're traveling. So if you just push the pedal a little, you can see I can push it without the trap opening. That'll activate the, the water valve. You can fill it as full as you want before you use it. You just have to do that each time, all right? Okay, good. So, pick it up the pace here. You open up your, your vent hood here, or your vent uh, cover there, I'm sorry. Or, no, let's call it, let's call it the right thing. Let's call it a, a, a range cover, all right? So, you just turn on the gas here, and you spark it like that. The gas is off right now, so it's not lighting, but that's all you do. You turn this clockwise to spark it. 
Now the oven's a little different. You need a grill lighter. Uh, down here at the very back is a pilot light. So you're just going to go to um, pilot and then you depress it and hold it. Then with the other hand you'll stick your grill lighter back there and light the pilot light. When it lights you'll still be holding this and you hold it for another 10-15 seconds or so to heat up the thermocouple. Then you go to operating temperature and it cycles through just like a regular oven. But when you shut it off, the flame obviously goes out, but so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the, uh, the oven, okay? This is your range hood I told you about. Remember I told you about the vent on the outside? Um, I'm sorry I'm all over the place with this camera here. Um, but you just got fan and light. Um, microwave works like any other microwave. Your radio, you can, it's obviously a regular AM FM radio, but you can stream off this USB. You can hook up wirelessly with Bluetooth and play your MP3s off your phone or tablet. Um, so there's a lot you can do with it. You have two speaker zones. One is inside, two is outside. Um, so there's, it's, a, it's a good radio just for, uh, for camping. You know, that's all you're doing with it. So it does everything you need. And then over here, you have a hookup for uh, your TV set. This is a signal booster for the digital antenna. Let me get the camera on it. You want it on like that, or you'll get a lousy picture. But you got your hookup here and your power. I guess in this case, they would have you set it on the, the TV on the table here. I guess that's their thinking. All right. Okay, and then of course you have uh, um, an HDMI here, which uh, I can't tell you 100% because I didn't hook, I didn't prep this, and there's no TV hooked up. But I would, I would say that for sure that it goes to there. So because this is, I didn't mention this is a disc player too, so it does CDs and DVDs. So if you pop a DVD in here, and this went to your your TV set, then uh, it would play your DVD. I'm sure. Okay. I'm confident about that now. All right. So this this jackknife's flat. This couch. You probably know that. You just pull up on it and it'll jackknife flat. You can drop the posts on this table and set the lid, or lid, gosh, I'm having a heck of a time this morning. Set the tabletop onto these cleats, or call it a lid if you want. <laughs> Excuse me. And then put the cushions in to fill in the space. All right. So that's that. There's a couple other things in here, over here. This device here is the power converter. It converts... 110 AC down to 12 volt DC or over to 12 volt DC. So on this side of it you have regular household circuit breakers for the AC part of it and they're all labeled here. Some things have to run in AC power, you know, the, the air conditioner for example or the microwave. Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC over here. You've got 12 volt fuses and they're labeled. If these fuses ever blow, it'll actually light up and you can see them through this tinted plastic here. All right. Also, this will sense how much energy your battery needs, and as long as you're plugged in now, it'll sense the energy, and um, it'll send up whatever your battery needs. If the battery's low, it'll send, you know, 10 amps or, or I'm, excuse me, uh, um, um, yeah, 10 amps or so, and then if, if it's low, it'll just trickle a couple, whatever, or if it's charged, it'll trickle a couple. Like I said, yeah, I'm having a hard time here. Basically, I'll say this one more time. The, this is a, also a battery tender, so if your battery is low, It'll sense that and send as much energy as it needs. And if it's charged, it'll just trickle a couple amps up there to maintain it. All right. This is your um, carbon monoxide and LP gas detector. So basically, it'll uh, carbon monoxide build off will send it up, will send it off, and uh, and uh, LP leak or the burner on or something. It will it will let you know by going off. I'll set it off so so you can hear it self-test. It'll go through two self-tests, one for each gas. Next one coming up. And then back to green. It should always be green like that. If it goes off, you, off, you just pack everybody up or pull everybody. <laughs> Gosh, don't, don't pack them up, whatever you do. But you get everybody out of the trailer, you go up front and shut off the gas and then figure out what's going on. But definitely don't pack them up. That would be bad advice. Okay, so this is a gas absorption refrigerator, um, so that means it'll run on 110 AC or LP gas, right? So you turn it on right there, that's very simple. Um, 
This switch selects auto. Auto means electric. They call it auto because it automatically searches for electricity. And if they can't find electricity, it'll automatically start it on gas. Uh, also, for, exa for an example, if you're at camp the campsite and it's the middle of the night, you're running on electricity, you have a power outage, it would automatically switch over to gas for you so you don't spoil the food, all right? Now, you can, you can run it dedicated to gas just by doing that. If the check light was to come on, it's telling you it faulted, it did not light, maybe there's a little air pocket in the line, whatever. If that does happen, you can just shut it off and turn it back on again, it'll cycle through again. But nine times out of ten, you're going to be right there on auto. Now, the uh, only other thing about this, this thing's called a thermistor. And you can see the sticker says the higher you go with it, the cooler it gets in here. So you're just going to basically have this up all the way. This is just a clip that holds it on. The thermistor is actually on the end of this, this wire here. You can see it. So you're just going to push that up as high as you can get it. And unless it's cold outside, that's always the way you're going to keep it. All right, so the thermostat. You hit it once to light it, or to, to illuminate it, and then uh, you're going to, that's low, that's just a fan, that's the air conditioner, that's the furnace, and that's off. It's that simple. You just select the one you want. Now there's a lag time for everything, so it's not gonna immediately turn on. There's a five second or so delay when you're turning things on and off, so keep that in mind. Uh, these things that I got out of the front compartment are, are analog, uh, controllers for your your um, mattresses on the left hand side generally it's on the left I'm sure it is on this one you will plug this into the mattress and the other one here will go into a, a just 10 AC the closest plug and then you can just set the temperature now this is not a, a mattress heater it's a mattress warmer it's not going to heat it and make it hot it's just going to take the chill off of it okay all right, I think we got through it, except for one more thing. <laughs> okay, so your awning, obviously you extend it here. It just rolls out, right, or rolls back in and going the other way. You're going to uh, roll it out until you can see the awning tube. That's how you know you're all the way out. Um, you have a light on it. Okay, um, the water pump I told you about, if you're pumping your own water out of the fresh water tank, you're going to do that there. To light your water heater on gas, I told you the switch was in here, it's right there. Once again, always make sure there's water in the water heater before you, you light it. You check your battery, charged. Fresh water has got water in it right now, it's, it's almost full, it actually shows full, but it's not quite. Um, that's just the water testing it. Your black tank is empty, your gray tank is empty. You don't gray, gray uh, two and three are not used because that's just for a different application. So you got gray one, black, and fresh are, are, are uh, the ones you're gonna use. So basically when you're, like your black tank, once you're getting past two thirds, you're gonna have to start thinking about flood, dumping the tank, um, that sort of thing. It just gives you an idea how much is in there, how much waste is in each tank, okay? All right, gosh, I think I made it through this. I hope I hope you're still with me. Um, any of the lights that don't work with the master switch has a button right here in the middle. There are fan light combos that hang on that the the pole that holds the uh, the uh, bunk open. Uh, you plug it in right there. Let me find it for you. You know, right here, you get two of them, one for each of your your beds. It's got a two-speed <laughs> a two-feed, a two-speed fan, and it's got a light on it, so you can read by it or you cool yourself down a little bit. So, okay, all right. So now that's it. So thanks for bearing with me, and uh, this is a uh, um, this trailer has to be winterized. Keep that in mind. You may know all this stuff already. I don't know your level of experience, but. Um, you'll have to have that done or somebody who knows how will show you. You have to bypass the water heater because you can't get antifreeze into the water heater because uh, it leaves a foul taste and smell, things like that. So it's, if, if you don't know it, it's not very difficult. It can be learned very easily. Um, otherwise, you could have it done. Um, like I said, always inspect the roof and the seals on your trailer. You have to do that. And that's not this trailer. It's every trailer ever made. That's the best advice I can give to people. So make sure you do that. And um, most of all, make sure you camp a lot. 
get a lot of use out of it, plan ahead, and uh, that's the key to being a happy trailer owner is to do a lot of camping with it. So thank you very much for purchasing from National RV Detroit, and goodbye.